Will your tool not turn on? Does it start and stop erratically when you pull the trigger? If so, it just might be time to replace the cord. The cord connects the power source to the switch. The tool won't turn on if the cord becomes damaged. This damage might be obvious, such as a cut or a nick in the cord. Sometimes the damage occurs inside the cord in the form of a broken or a burnt wire. This damage will require a multimeter to diagnose. Many of the symptoms of a bad cord will be the same as a bad switch or worn motor brushes, so it's a good idea to inspect each part before simply replacing the cord. Replacing a cord is a repair that you can do yourself, and I'm going to show you how. We'll begin by removing the top half of the handle. Now I can go ahead and remove the screw that secures the switch to the handle. Now I can pull the switch away from the handle and remove the two wires that go back to the cord. I'll remove the two screws on the strain relief so I can remove the cord. Now I can pull the wires away from the housing. And pull the cord away. With the cord removed from the saw, now I'll remove the strain relief so we can reuse it on the new cord. With the old cord removed, now I can go ahead and prep the new cord. You'll notice that we're going to need to strip back some of the insulation on the cord itself. So I'll go ahead and lay out the longest wires, which in this case are the black wires, next to each other and mark on the insulation where I need to cut. Then I'll use a utility knife to carefully cut through the insulation, being careful not to cut the wires inside. I'll cut just a little, then bend it back making sure that I'm not cutting through the wires. Once it's just about cut through, I can pull on it, and hopefully break it free. And I'll pull the insulation away from the wires. Inside the cable, you'll find these fabric reinforcement pieces. We'll want to cut those away as well. You'll notice on the old cord that the white wire is slightly shorter than the black wire. So I'll need to trim it to length on our new cord as well. So I'll just line up both wires next to each other and then trim our new wire down to the correct length. The last thing we need to do to get our new cord ready is install some new terminals on the end. To do that, I'll strip back about a quarter inch of wire off the end of both the black and white wires. Twist it so that each strand in the wire is tight against each other. Repeat this on the black wire. Now that I have the wires ready, I can install some new terminals and crimp them in place. Now before you wire up your new cord, you'll want to make sure to remember to reinstall the strain relief. Now I can install the new cord into the saw. First, I'll line up the string relief with the opening in the housing. Next, I want to align the cord in the proper location for the cord clamp. And I'll twist the cord around so that I have the black side going to the side of the switch where it goes and the white on the white side. I'll place the clamp back over the cord and secure it with the screws. Now I'll install each of the wires back to the switch. I'll begin by bending the terminals to almost 90 degrees. Insert the screw and attach it to the switch. And the same for the white wire.
Now I'll re-secure the switch to the handle. You'll notice that there's two openings for a screw. I want to use the opening closest to the switch as the other opening is used by one of the screws that secure the two halves of the handle together. And I'll tuck all the wires away into the housing so they don't get pinched when we put the saw back together. I'll finish up by reinstalling the half of the handle. I like to use a screwdriver to start the screws so that I don't strip them out. And I'll finish up with an impact driver.